In the last few videos, I showed you guys how to wire switches, relays, fuses. And in this video, we're going to go ahead and step up the ante one more time. And I'm going to be showing you guys how circuit breakers work and flasher relays. But before we can move on to the flasher relay, I need to go over once again how a fuse works and then how that compares to a circuit breaker. So a fuse, like we mentioned in our very first video, is a circuit protection device that is a one-time use only. It's rated to a specific amperage. Once your circuit exceeds that amperage, amperage the little wire that's inside of the fuse is going to break and power is no longer going to be transmitted from your power distribution box or your fuse box relay box to whatever load you're trying to power like i mentioned different fuses have different amp ratings and if you guys can tell the little wire that's inside this 30 amp fuse is significantly larger than the little wire that's in a 3 amp fuse and so in a wiring diagram this is what a fuse would look like so we have our battery we have our negative side of the battery our positive side of the battery we have our ground then we're going to draw Draw our fuse and then we continue on to the circuit in this case we're going to be powering up a light so we're going to go ahead and draw a light bulb here i'm just basically reiterating what we already know so if i grab this three amp fuse and i go ahead and try to power this light bulb let's see what actually happens i don't know if you guys were able to tell but this fuse just blew up so you can tell because now there's a little black spot in there and then it's a little bit melted. So what ended up happening is that the light tried to turn on, the amps that the light was pulling exceeded the amount of amps that this fuse could handle and it eventually blew up. If I go ahead and grab that 30 amp one more time and try to do the exact same thing, let's see what actually happens. So we have our fuse and then we have our power wire. And now our light is being powered normally, the fuse is being held together, and everything's all fine and dandy. Like I said, we already talked about this before, but now we need to talk about circuit breakers. A circuit breaker is also a circuit protection device, but it works a little bit different. Whereas the fuse is a one-time use only, a circuit breaker is actually multi-use. I'm going to go ahead and draw the same light bulb, the same ground wire, but instead of the squiggly line for the fuse, we're actually going to do like a little U-shape or an upside-down U-shape or an upside-down smiley face and sometimes it's like this and sometimes it's like this it depends on who's drawing the diagram but this lets you know that it's a circuit breaker if you guys remember what we talked about in the relay video switches are either in the normally open position or normally closed that goes for switches relays and also circuit breakers so typically a circuit breaker will function exactly like a fuse until there is a problem once the amp rating is exceeded of a circuit breaker instead of blowing up like our three amp fuse just did the the circuit breaker is going to heat up and it's going to separate itself from the two points of contact until it cools down. Once the circuit breaker cools down, it'll actually come back down and make contact once again and the circuit will have power going through it. Depending on how much load is applied to the point that it blows the circuit breaker, the circuit breaker can come back right away. It could take a couple seconds. It just depends on the amp rating and the load that was applied to the circuit breaker. A circuit breaker is not a replacement for a fuse. You can't go out to your car, pull all the fuses out and put circuit breakers because the circuit breaker, once it cools down, like I said, it'll try to reapply voltage to your load. Where you would normally see a circuit breaker is in situations where whatever load you are applying may sometimes get in contact with something that can short out the system. For example, a wiper motor or a horn or something like that that's subject to water where it could accidentally ground itself to the body, but it's one of those components that you can't afford to have fail especially if it's raining or if there's something in danger. If you're driving in the rain and your wiper motors just suddenly stop because the fuse blew, you're going to be in a lot of trouble. But if the wiper blades were working, all of a sudden they got shorted out, but then they suddenly start working again, that's a better situation. Than so a circuit breaker and a fuse have its own dedicated categories of what you'd want to use them for. Now the question is, why are we talking about this? Why are we talking about circuit breakers and fuses if we basically just went through this in the very first video of this series? And that's because the circuit breaker is directly related to a flasher relay. I've got a two-prong flasher relay right here. Normally you can get these in two-prong and three-prong, and I don't know if they make them in four-prong, but in most classic cars, the two-prong is the most popular. 
In a wiring diagram, it would look like this. It would be a circle and it would be more like an L shape, but the two contacts don't touch each other. And th that's basically what this is. If you see this on a diagram somewhere, just know that it's supposed to be a flasher relay. The flasher doesn't really have a polarity. There's no positive or negative. It doesn't know which way to go. It just knows that it's supposed to transmit power through it temporarily. I have another flasher relay right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up so I can show you what's inside. If you look underneath, you got the two prongs. And if we follow those up, we have one prong that sits right here and it provides the ground for this circuit. And then if we follow the other one, it goes up here. One side powers this side, the other side powers that side. And if we look in between these two, you can see that the little piece of metal contacts another piece of metal and that's how they end up working. This and a circuit breaker operate the exact same way. The only difference is that a flasher relay is supposed to trip. It's supposed to trip at a very low amp rating when compared to say a circuit breaker. So in a wiring diagram, this is what it would look like. You have your battery power, just like we do always. We have the negative side going to ground. We have, let's say, going to a switch. I'm going to ignore the fuse because we're not gonna be using a fuse today. This will go into here. Then we have an outside circuit. Let's go ahead and have that go to a light bulb and then to ground. So now we've added a flasher relay to this circuit. What's going to happen now is that when the switch is activated, power is going to flow through the flasher relay and turn on this light. Once the amount of heat builds up in the flasher relay, the contacts are going to separate themselves and then the system's going to turn off. Once the system cools off, both contacts are going to come back together again. And so the light will end up pulsing on, off, on, off, on, off. And if this is starting to sound familiar, it is because this is exactly how your turn signals and your hazard lights work. So now let's go ahead and build this circuit out. We have our headlight here, which is already grounded. We have the positive wire that leads into the high beam circuit. We're going to go ahead and plug this into one of the sides of the flasher. It doesn't really matter. We're going to go into this side. And then the only thing we're going to do is that we're going to take the positive wire and we're going to contact the other contact directly. There's no way this aluminum can can shock you because as you guys can see here, it's isolated from the rest of the circuit. So it doesn't matter what's being held on the outside, there's no chance you're gonna get shocked because the circuit's not in direct contact with the cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab it by the cover and then we're gonna go ahead and apply power. And as you guys can see, the system's working just like it needs to. If you guys pay attention, you can kind of hear a very faint clicking. And this type of circuit doesn't need any input from me. So long as power is being transmitted through the flasher relay and there is voltage inside the battery, this light will continuously flash on, off, on, off. And this is the basic principle as to how the turn signals operate. In the next video, I'll show you guys how to wire a lot of these circuits up to an actual column. So I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, signing out.